For Bayon Tech Talks, it's a KO motor special. We're looking specifically at the RS motor and Pro Controller, which we tested recently in our last video. We're also going to discuss some other subjects relating to KO. My first thoughts on receiving the KO is that it's an exceptionally well-made product, well presented. The website's very clear and accurate as to exactly what it does. When it came to fitting the controller, it required no additional parts or components to make it fit. It was a factory fit straight to the standard Suron mounts. Setting it up, and I have to say, 10 out of 10 on customer services. Way before this controller motor even got fitted into this bike, a custom service rep from KO had reached out to us, asked us if we needed, it, needed anything in terms of, I don't know what you need, but uh, help fitting it or help tuning it. Obviously we was cool doing both of those, so, but it was really good to know that if you ever did need the support, it's there. If you have any issues or questions regarding the controller, most times you get an answer within an hour or less. If you, if you put that into comparison to other products I've bought that barely come with a wiring diagram or I've, I've left, been left scouting the internet for wiring diagrams for hours on end the, and the instructions that come with those products that I've bought in the past are somewhat vague or poorly translated Dealing with KO is like a breath of fresh air for me and it's a completely different experience to the numerous other controllers and motors that I've purchased in the past. And that's something that I want to kind of highlight in my experience. This isn't my first rodeo. This is by no means the first motor and controller combo or even motor and controller that I've purchased. So I do have some experience dealing with controllers and motors and so far so good in terms of fitting. So. When it came to the first ride and we actually got out there, initially I was running with the factory settings, which are all set at 220 phase amps, or sorry, 220 battery amps, 600 phase amps, and then the, all the ramping and all the throttle curves set to kind of standard factory stuff. Extremely powerful, extremely fast in a straight line didn't seem to have enough bottom end pull for me. So we did a bit of tuning and also I, I figured I don't really want the top end stuff. I'm not a guy who does a lot of high speed stuff unless we're testing things for the channel and trying to find something's top speed. When I'm riding mostly I'm doing wheelies and doing some off road stuff. So tuned the power down a bit using the app and gave it some more power in the low end. So at first it would pull off a little bit slow and lacklustre and then it would pick up further on in the RPM range. We changed that to make it real snappy in the low end and then on the eco mode we've also limited the RPM so if you want to kind of wheelie without picking up too much speed you can use that eco mode. So first ride I was really blown away by the power and the intensity of the motor. The noise is something else it really does have a wail to it like it sounds unique, let's say, we'll put some footage in the video quickly of what it sounds like accelerating. But there is a noticeable and discernible difference in the volume of the motor compared to a stock Suron motor. Given 15 or 20 minutes of riding the bike, I was really getting into it and really feeling the, the power that it was giving out and I was enjoying it loads. I spent about two hours initially, the video obviously just highlights of places we went and things we did, but all in all spent about two hours on the bike and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it to the point of, I was going into this, honestly, quite, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was essentially. I've used the QS offerings, I've tried ASI Back 8000 controllers, I've tried Far Driver controllers, I've tried all kinds of combinations on the Suron, but honestly, this felt head and shoulders above any, anything else. And I think a lot of that comes down to this, these components, this motor and this controller have been designed for purpose. They've been designed to put into a Suron and to be very powerful. And as a result, they fit great into a Suron and they're very powerful. So again, 
bonus points for power and bonus points for first ride. On to the next subject, and I've got some stuff written down on my phone so I don't miss anything, so I'm just going to check that quick. On to some of the background of KO, so I've had some brief discussions with the owner and people at KO. They've only been selling so wrong components and upgrade parts for five months now. And for a company that's only been trading for less than six months, to have such an iconic kind of following and to have such, cool, uh, such a cool range of products, I think is absolutely outstanding. And hats off to them for working so hard behind the scenes to bring these products to the market and to, I don't know, really put their best into it because for me, I can often see where corners have been cut in either the production of things or the manufacturing side of things. And essentially what it boils down to is vendors cutting corners in order to make money. Now I hope certain vendors are listening to this. It's plain and obvious that you've not been spending the full amount that you could have spent on developing your products and making them the very best product they can be. And you spent a lot of time cutting corners and making it as cheap as possible in order to maximize profits. Now KO are designing quality products irrespective of cost. So if it's gonna cost them X amount to manufacture this and to make it to the best quality they can, that's exactly what they're gonna do. And for me, that no, no compromise attitude is exactly what I need because I don't enjoy spending money on things that don't live up to what they're supposed to do or don't have the right power or fail soon down the line. So it's nice to know that these guys are putting a lot of money into making sure the products are high quality, quality controlled, and they're giving you the aftercare and support as well. So winning there, winning. So recently KO have been on the backlash of a fair amount of criticism from various vendors. We're not gonna name anyone in this video, but I'm sure if you follow some of the happenings and going on, goings on in the Sir Run EV community, You've, you've seen the post and the slander and some of the things that have been said that the controllers are rebranded products and they haven't been purpose designed. Time and time again, KO have been called out and time and time again, KO have proved themselves spending time and also revealing in-depth R&D that a lot of the companies criticizing them wouldn't show you. So hats off to them for not only kind of accepting the criticism, but rising to it, that's a real good look. And now, I remember when, so a lot of these criticisms from companies, they need to realize that KO have only literally, as we mentioned earlier on, been trading for less than six months. So being criticized by companies that have been trading in these realms for years on end, in my opinion, really isn't fair. It's, it's almost like they haven't given them a chance to show what they can do in, a, in some sort of fear of not wanting to let them into the scene or I don't know what it is. It, it seems unusual to me, but for someone who is open-minded and wants to give something a chance and wants to actually see what it can do, if you was to test the KO motor and ride it in a Sir Run, and tell me that anything else is equivalent or even close to that, I'd probably say he's lying because I've tried ASIs, as I said, and I've tried other setups and they're just not producing reliably the power that this setup is producing. As sure, you can make a stock run or a stock sir run motor perform up to the levels of a KO motor, but it won't last very long. And we've got evidence of that on our desk over here, where we've got over eight damaged or broken Sir Run motors, which is as a result of overtuning them and them being overdriven. So I can almost guarantee you that a KO motor is gonna last a hell of a lot longer running at 72 volt high ampage than a back 8000 connected to a stock Sir Run motor. So I can understand a lot of these vendors' fears and criticisms, and I honestly feel like it comes from a place of let's be honest, losing profits, losing money. An ASI controller can be, a, can be purchased for very cheap. They're not expensive controllers to buy if you're a retailer. And then obviously you've got the side of 
it, an ASI controller is a universal, non-specific controller. It was originally designed to go in electric road sweepers, golf carts, any kind of vehicle that has a brushless motor. To compare that to something that's been purposely designed to do one roll and one roll only, I don't think is a sensible bet to put your money in the side of the company that designed something 10 years ago for a road sweeper and it's been rehashed and redeveloped to fit inside a sur run versus something that's been designed in 2021, 22, using the latest components and technology. So that's for me the real difference between the KO motor and let's say an ASI. Far driver, the same could be said, it's a generic controller that runs on anything now. Don't get it twisted, I'm always gonna be a big fan of far driver and I do like far driver controllers a lot. In full disclosure, I'm not a fan of ASI just through things that I've seen through working in the EV repair industry and seeing the rate of failure and the internal, the quality of the, or let's say lack of quality of internal components used. I'm never going to be a fan of ASI. So just to let you know, I'm, that's full disclosure. I'm not an ASI fan. I've never been. I am a far driver fan. But honestly, I feel like KO is doing something new that a lot of companies are either scared or don't have the budget to do. So moving on to the future of KO, they've got a lot of new products on the horizon. They've promised a KO display. They've shown a KO swing arm. They've also promised a KO battery, which is going to come with its own proprietary connector. And I imagine also breaker unit as well. So that's awesome. There's many other things that I've been told about I'm not allowed to disclose, which have absolutely blown my mind. And if you keep your eyes peeled and keep watching on the KO forums and the KO groups on Facebook, you'll see little snippets and stuff. Another thing I do like about KO is they're completely transparent about the things that they're developing and the things they're making. If they've got something new and they're excited to show it to you, they're going to show it to you and you're going to see the factory where it's made and you'll see the internals of it. They're not afraid to show you exactly what goes into the stuff that they're making. So all in all, I'm a big fan of KO. And again, here, full disclosure, I've been offered a job at KO, which I did accept. So I've become a tuner and tester for KO products. If that somewhat affects your interpretation of this video, then so be it. I'm just letting you guys know that that's how it goes. I, I really support the product. And I mean, I feel honored to be part of the movement and that they've asked me to be part of their team creating these awesome products. So if my opinion means anything to you and you enjoy the stuff that we do and we create, then know that I think that this is a perfectly valid product and any criticism that you've seen is either jealousy or, I don't know, fear of losing, losing profits. So all in all, I'm a big fan of KO products and let's see what we can shred in the future. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching today's KO special tech talks and we'll be back we're gonna as soon as the weather dries out get some more riding on this bike get some more testing done we are also gonna 96 volt it because I know a lot of you are waiting for the 96 volt battery to drop in and to get connected and for us to shred that back tire there's an awful lot of tread on there and I've got a big stack of tires over there that can replace that so 96 volt it shred the tire off and that's what we're going to do so See you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Sit.